When colleges make victimhood a coveted status that confers privileges, victims proliferate. That's what George Washington, oops, George Will, from Washington Post, said about the push to make survivors of campus rape have some sort of justice. And I wondered, where's my survivor bonus? It must have gotten lost in the mail. All I could think about, where is it? So I made a hashtag on Twitter, and it kind of exploded. And people all over the world share their stories about being a survivor of sexual violence. The backlash was so huge that George Will even ranted about me on C-SPAN. And that's how I know I really arrived. So six years ago, I was expelled from Tufts University because I spoke out about being raped. So I really know what the privileges that I got from being a sexual assault survivor. But it allowed me to connect with other survivors around the country. And we made a petition to ask the Department of Education to do the right thing and hold schools accountable. And we got over 175,000 signatures. Our message went all the way to the White House. I remember having tears in my eyes when I saw President Obama talk about his administration's commitment to helping survivors of sexual violence. And we've really come so far, but it's, some people ask, why now? What's been happening? Well, it's thanks to a law called Title IX, 37 small words that have a huge impact. While the movement's been going around for many generations, long before I even thought about what schools I'm going to apply to, now the progress has been unprecedented. And it's really thanks to the internet, because the internet and social media has been integral to our successes as a movement. It offers the right combination of tools that survivors like me have been able to combat the stigma of being victimized that has been keeping us silent for way too long. Storytelling is integral for change, and it allowed us to tell our stories on our own terms. When the mainstream media ignored us, we made our own media. And we didn't have to worry about the media editing it or have being misrepresented. And we're able to talk back to jerks like George Will and tell them about the reality of being raped on a college campus. There's no privilege to that. But I think most importantly, we were able to know that we're not alone because colleges were telling us that it's our fault when they didn't do anything about um, us being raped. But we quickly found out by being online that this is a systemic issue happening all across the country. You know, many people wonder, they say, why should colleges even have to do anything about rape, right? But it's like if schools are willing to punish somebody for stealing a laptop, which is also a felony, they should be willing to hold school, you know, rapists accountable on their college campuses because we expect and want better from our institutions and fellow students. If someone can be kicked out of school for copying a paper, they should be, will, they should be kicked out for raping another human being. And what sort of values do schools have if underage drinking is a violation of their code of conduct, but rape isn't? What message are we sending to young adults when they go out into the world and they're not punished for raping somebody else? Because right now we're telling people it's okay to abuse people and you will get away with it, and that's just not right. Because how can students do their jobs of learning if they're worried about rape, you know, heading into their rape, running into rapists in a dining hall? Because Title IX is about equal access to education. What kind of access do you have if you have to drop a class because your rapist is in it? But the media continues to perpetuate these really harmful stereotypes. But I just want to say newsflash, young women are not too stupid to know whether they've been raped or not. Yet, society is just way too focused on the one in four statistics saying that we're wrong. But it's not just about the numbers, it's really about this human cost. Because even if just one person is raped on a college campus and the school does nothing about it, that is really one person too many. Sometimes I think, you know, when people talk about they want to interject their thoughts about, oh, you know, this whole movement is just about women and they've been drinking far too long and now they're regretting it and now they're making it up. Sometimes I can only just make a face and just you know, make a face like Kanye and say, I want to see your peer-reviewed scientific study about campus sexual assault. Because we need to stop listening to these naysayers and believe survivors so we can work towards a world where people are getting and giving enthusiastic consent. I want to say that, you know, we feel empowered as college students because we feel like we can have justice. Right now, only three out of 100 rapists see a day in jail. But if incarceration is our only measurement of justice, we have a long way to go. Because we really need to start thinking about different paths to justice. Survivors need to believe that they're going to have a chance. 
So I hope this is a springboard for us to make some progress where survivors feel like they can come forward because that's the only way that we can get justice in our society. Thank you.